Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Me? I've been better. Well, I've been worse, but I've been better. I want to take on a bit of a sensitive topic today. I want to talk about apps that can hurt us. Uh, we spend a lot of time on this channel talking about all of the positives of using productivity apps and communication apps and social networking and YouTube and Facebook and all of these good things, or at least I present them as good things. But I think I would be remiss if I did not occasionally also point out that there are two sides to the technology space that we're dealing with. The technology, a two-edged sword that cuts both ways. It's not always necessarily what technology will do for us, <clears throat> but sometimes we need to be concerned with what technology will do to us. Case in point, an email that I received uh, enrolling me to, or in, trying to enlist me in signing a petition uh, by a young woman named Elizabeth. Uh, she's put forward a petition to shut down an app. Now, why does she want to shut down this app? Well, Elizabeth's had a tough time. Uh, she tried to commit suicide as a, as a teenager. Uh, while she was in recovery, she had a variety of people posting that she should just go ahead and kill herself using an app called Yik Yak. How can people do such things, you wonder? Indeed, how can they? One way they can do it is if they can hi hide behind a veil of anonymity, which is exactly what Yik Yak provides. So today we are gonna take a look at apps that can hurt on Dotto Tech. Yik Yak is one of a class of software that allows people to post things anonymously. Now, I was first made aware of this sort of software quite a few years ago, maybe seven years ago. There was an app for Facebook that was called Honesty Box. And I can remember quite starkly this app uh, because there was uh, several cases of young people who I knew who were being bullied as a result of Honesty Box. Now, what Honesty Box allowed you to do was it allowed you to post on Facebook anonymously. It was an app that people installed in Facebook. Now here was the here, here was the here was the, the the cruel nature of an app like Honesty Box. Is it's designed to promote honesty, to, for people to say the truth about what they feel about things. Yeah, right. The problem is a because of the anonymity, people just go overboard. They'll say almost anything, especially young people will be uh, excessively cruel, but not exclusively young people. But here was the real challenge that we faced in our school systems, is young people would be, would be targeted through Honesty Box. It's bad enough being criticized, being called fat, being called stupid, being called all sorts of things by other people. It's bad enough if they're anonymous. But if they're anonymous and they're one of your friends, see when these kids walked into school each day after they'd been bullied online, they knew that it wasn't just some random person that was calling them stupid fat and that they should die. It was one of their friends. It was one of the people who they've actually signed up as a friend or enrolled as a friend in Facebook. Imagine how cruel and how lonely a place it must have been for kids that were facing that. Now, fortunately, Honesty Box seems to have gone by the wayside. Uh, good luck and good riddance to you, I say. But now there's a whole new class of apps that are coming out that provide the same sort of service. And they're not necessarily tied to Facebook anymore, but they're just plain mobility apps. Case in point, Yik Yak. Now Yik Yak, I'm going to show it to you right here. Let's have a quick boo at Yik Yak because it is one of the apps uh, that does this. Of course, sort of it's thing. free. And when we launch Yik Yak, what Yik Yak is, is a series of just basically text posts that people say that uh, I guess people try and be funny, they try and be honest, they try and be whimsical, they try and be clever, uh, and they post all of these sorts of things. Now, I have to create a bit of a warning right now. I have no control over what's being shown on my screen. If you see something rude on Dotto Tech's screen, forgive me. Uh, we're, 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 you know, we're kind of flying without a parachute today on Dotto Tech. Having said that, so what happens in Yik Yak is comments are posted. Now comments can be posted uh, just broadly, but they're also regionally specific. In other words, you can look for comments that are within five kilometers or three kilometers, which means you can get very granular with who you're talking about or what you're talking about or what you're referring to. And you can be referring to people, maybe not by name, that other people in the area will know about because you just add that extra little bit of information. You follow me. Now what happens is people vote up or vote down comments. So it's got that, uh, that ability to be, able to, in, uh, to be able to kind of make things more popular or less popular based on, uh, based on this voting system. Now, if we take a look in Yik Yak and we go into the more area, you'll get some sense 
of what happens. So we can actually go into the top yaks in my area. So this is actually now all yaks that are happening in the physical area, like within a couple of kilometers of me at this particular point. So this is where the ability to be able to target individuals comes in. Now, to be fair, the folks at Yik Yak will tell us, uh, where is it? There it is. Rules. Do not bully or specifically target other yakkers. Do not bully or specifically target other yakkers. They say that twice because it's important. Uh, zero tolerance policy for po posting private information. A and they go on about not being, just basically not being stupid. So here buried down deep in the rules and info is this, is this disclaimer telling them not to, uh, telling people not to be abusive. The bottom line though is you've created a privacy app. You've created an app that creates anonymity that allows people to say anything with no consequences. The worst consequence that could happen to people posting using this stupid app is they could be banned from the app. Oh, tears. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's, 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 it's something that we should be paying attention to. And really, people who are creating these apps, why, you're talented people. Can't you come up with something more creative, something better? And don't give me the argument, oh, if we don't do it, somebody else will. Well, if you don't do it, you can do something good, perhaps. Okay, on, on the soapbox. Here's the next app that I wanted to show you. It's called Whisper. Now, it's similar uh, in the fact that it creates a, an area, an aura of anonymity, but it's much closer to Instagram as far as how the posts, so you create internet memes. Uh, and again, we can just look nearby and it's posting these memes in the nearby area. So this is another app that creates, that because it's the posters are anonymous, is fraught with challenges. Again, it's got you know lots of disclaimers and, and they theoretically are, are monitoring the feeds to make sure that nothing offensive or nothing hurtful goes forward. But who's to say what's hurtful and what's not as this stuff goes out? So the victims uh, are the ones that are gonna determine whether or not they are being bullied or not. Again, an app that promotes anonymity I just, I just don't see that we really need it because it just creates too much opportunity for people being hurt. Now, what can we do about it? Very little other than being aware of these apps. As, as adults, as parents in the community, I think it's something that we have to pay attention to, know if it's on our kids' phones or not, have conversations with them about what being anonymous online really means and why we should be, why we should be avoiding that in terms of communications. We're not talking about advertising and tracking you to sell to you. We're talking about actual communications, person-to-person -person communications. You might think that I'm kind of leaving something by the wayside here by not talking at this point here about Snapchat, which is another very popular app that has a lot of parents concerned. I see a large difference between Snapchat and these apps that I'm talking about right now. The biggest difference being Snapchat, anybody that's actually friends with other people on Snapchat, they know who each other are. So there's a degree of credibility and there's a degree of, uh, uh, of accountability attached to Snapchat. Now, as far as the type of content that's being shared, that's not really what I wanted to talk about here right now. What I did want to talk about is the uh, environment that these anonymous apps create. We seem to get rid of them a few years back when we fight, when we got rid of Honesty Box. They are back with a vengeance, and people like Elizabeth think that they're so profoundly damaging to young people that she's willing to put her story out in public and ask and and and, and ask that we support them being banned. Now, is a ban going to work? I have no idea. If you're interested in signing this online petition, I'll have the link in our notes below. So that's it really a message today, it's just kind of a warning. Not our normal fun stuff here on Dotto Tech, uh, but we really should be talking about these sorts of things as well, don't you think? That's it for me for today. I'm Steve Dotto, till next time, have fun storming the castle.